Oh boy. I want to talk about something that's driving me a little bit insane. One of the problems with socialists is that when you argue with them, <clears throat> you'll invariably discuss private property. Because people who are socialists think that private property should be abolished. Now here's the problem. If you abolish private property, then you don't have anything that you own. But wait. See, here's what they do to try to get around the simple fact that if private property were abolished, they could no longer use a computer or a phone because their computer or phone would be private property that was now communal property. Now, people would have to share everything. Now, they don't own their phone. They don't own their computer. They don't own their car. Everything is communal. But what really irks me is that they try to get around to this. <clears throat> How do you get around the fact that this microphone and that camera... How do you get around the fact that if you abolish private property, they're not yours anymore, and you don't necessarily get to use them? Well, my friends, the solution is in, and I've seen this repeated several times, and it's completely stupid. The solution is personal property. So what they'll do when I challenge them by saying, if you abolish private property, you can't post comments to me. You can't post videos because that stuff is not necessarily yours anymore. They'll invariably come back with, oh, I'm talking about private property, not personal property. Personal property is private property. Now, you'll start getting some hair-splitting action going on where it's like, oh no, private property is property that private corporations own. So I also think that corporations should be owned by their employees, which is another thing I, I can get into, but I'd rather get into it at another time. The uh, private property versus personal property thing, they, they try to make out like the private property is corporate property, and the personal property is stuff that you personally own. So wait a minute, y you can't have private property go away and then personally own something because personal property is private property. If you were to draw a Venn diagram, like, like a circle diagram, like this is private property. This is property owned by a person or entity, whatever. And this is personal property within that scope of private property. You cannot be for private property being abolished, but then have this make-believe notion that there's something called personal property that is exempt. Because what you're saying is, oh, well, we're going to arbitrarily designate certain private property to be okay, but then we're going to arbitrarily designate this other private property to be owned by the workers or owned by the community. And then you start getting into the extremely difficult decisions. Hey, who draws that line? Whose decision is that? Because now you've changed the subject from should private property be abolished to what private property should be abolished, and that shifts to who gets to make that choice? Who is responsible for choosing what private property goes away and becomes magically owned by the community. See, the problem is that we as a society or in a, as a business, society, business, any of these things where multiple people come together are still composed of individual people. So everything ultimately boils down to the individual no matter how you cut it. <clears throat> One of the problems with collectivism and socialism is that they pull things into group dynamics and try to ignore the individuals. See, all it takes to ruin the socialist utopia is for some people to not play along. Human nature is to seek advantages for yourself and your people around you, your tribe, if you will. It all comes crashing down when people exploit the system, when people game the system, when the company that you're a cooperative owner of just by virtue of having been hired at all, when other people at that company decide that they're going to vote against what you think is right. 
See, they're still individuals. And even if you go, oh, we can vote, oh, they're still individuals. Comes down to the same thing with property. If the property is private or not, someone has to make that choice. Someone has to draw those lines in the sand. Now, you need a certain degree of certainty to make decisions in your life. If you don't have certainty, you shy away from making those decisions. You will make conservative, safe decisions based on the fact that you don't know what could happen, but if it goes bad, it could be bad for you. <clears throat> so you have to make a choice. What are you going to do? If someone decides that that camera and this microphone and that audio interface and that computer should be considered community property and it is taken from me, I can no longer talk to you this way. On the flip side, if they make the opposite decision, then I know I can continue to post these videos to the internet and talk to you this way. So here's where it, be where it becomes a little ugly. See, how do I get the camera in the first place? Well, I mean, I make money. I own my money, right? I perform work. I get money. I own my money. Arguably, my money is my private property. And I spend that money to acquire property. But see, it doesn't necessarily work that way in socialist utopia because private property is abolished. But somehow, magically, this thing called personal property still exists, even though that's just private property. How do I get a camera and a microphone in socialist land? Oh, well, let's assume that the rules don't just completely get thrown out and I can just go buy one with my money. Now, what happens when the people who draw those lines in the sand change? What happens when now the guy in charge decides all cameras are community property? And now I don't own the camera that I bought with my money that I spent my labor to acquire. That camera is taken from me, theft, and then made the property of the community. And then community property is subject to community bureaucracy to acquire the use of that resource. So now you've taken this camera and you've made it a thing that I have to get permission. I have to fill out forms. There has to be a meeting and decisions must be made at, at a table by individual people that aren't me as to whether I can get the camera for a few hours to record a video. <clears throat> and all of this is because now this bogus line between private property and personal property that you've magically created that doesn't actually exist is shifting back and forth. I can no longer rely on the camera that I worked for being my personal property. And that's the problem with personal property. It is still private property. You're using nice terms to say... Well, we're not really abolishing private property. We're just taking some of it away from you. But we might take more away from you, or we might allow you to acquire more yourself later, depending on the whims of the people who run your life slowly, bureaucratically, and disconnected from your individual needs and your individual life. Personal property is private property. It's private property by another name, but it's still private property. It's your way of drawing lines in the sand, taking over control of individual people's individual control of their individual property. That they individually sacrificed their time and labor to acquire. And you want to talk about corruption and how you think capitalism is corrupt and how socialism isn't a problem. It's not corrupt like capitalism because the people will have the power. What people? You are giving other people the power over that camera to make the decision whether I get to use that camera. And those other people are motivi motivated by their own individual motivations. They will arbitrarily decide perhaps because... I may not agree with them on something that they don't want me to ever have use of that camera, and therefore I cannot use it to get my voice out there on the internet. This is the danger of this lie of personal property versus private property. I love how the troll laugh came out right as I was talking about that. But it's pretty accurate, isn't it? 
It's a laugh. It's a joke. It's authoritarian bullshit by any other name. It disconnects people from things that they spent their labor to acquire. It is inherently an unfair notion that you can abolish private property. And it's even worse when you draw arbitrary lines in the sand that any idiot can show up, happen to get in some degree of control, and manipulate. That's about all. Take care. I hope this was educational. Good night, stream. Sleep tight. Oh, hey, there's a comment. Wait a minute. Uh-uh. No, let's see. Someone, someone doesn't like what I said. Personal property is something people use for their own personal consumption. Private property is the ownership materi over materials used specifically to accumulate capital. Same thing. It's the same thing. I'm using a camera right now. Well, what if somebody gives me something because they like the videos that I make? All of a sudden, the camera is now falling under your arbitrary private property definition, as I have obtained capital, i.e. something of value, in exchange for something that I did. So that's the end of that. And now the stream can end, because I've answered the only thing that anyone has posted here.